Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Monica Williams. I'm with USDA's Agricultural Research Service. Today we're here to talk about raising healthy backyard chickens. So if you're new to raising chickens or maybe you already have chickens and you just wanna learn more, you've come to the right place because we'll be speaking with two poultry experts and they will be answering your questions, providing you with tips and advice on how to best care for your chickens. Our two experts are Dr. David Swain and Dr. Ann Hurley-Bacon, and they're both poultry veterinarians at the U.S. National Poultry Research Center in Athens, Georgia. So let's meet our experts, Dr. Hurley-Bacon, Dr. Swain. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and also tell us where you are right now, and then we'll get started with the questions. Hi, I'm David Swain, and I'm the laboratory director here at the U.S. National Poultry Research Center in Athens, Georgia. I'm also a poultry veterinarian as well as a pathologist. Hi, I'm Dr. Ann Hurley-Bacon and I serve as our attending veterinarian at USNPRC. Um, in my role, I am charged with overseeing our veterinary care program and maintaining the highest possible standards of animal welfare. And currently I'm at my farm. Um, hopefully at some point in the background you'll be able to see our horses um, and you might uh, hear a pig munching on some acorns right around me. That's great. Okay, so for those of you who are watching, if you have questions that you want to ask Dr. Swain or Dr. Hurley Bacon, go ahead and drop them into the chat box. All right, our first question, Dr. Hurley Bacon, if someone wants to get chickens, what would be the first thing that they need to do? The first thing that I would suggest would be to do your homework. Um, especially if you're within city limits. Check all your local zoning laws, homeowners association rules, um, anything else that you can think might apply. Um, some of these laws might prevent you from owning poultry and others might limit the number that you can have in your backyard flock. Um, the next thing that I would suggest would be to carefully plan the location of your coop, um, so the, the area that you're going to be housing your birds in. Uh, you do not want to build a coop near lakes or ponds where wild waterfowl might frequent or near a wild bird feeding station. These different types of birds can be carriers of diseases that don't make them sick but will make your chicken sick. Uh, you also want to build a coop in an area that allows you to implement uh, the best biosecurity features to help keep diseases out of your flock and help keep you from spreading diseases potentially to other flocks around you. Great, thank you Dr. Hurley Bacon. Uh, here's our next question. What are some good bio biosecurity practices that I can do? Dr. Swain, if you could first explain what biosecurity is and then provide some best practices. Yeah, excellent question. You know, biosecurity is the, the physical features as well as the personal practice we all use to keep diseases out. You know, for example, uh, some wild birds, as Dr. Hurley Bacon mentioned, can carry diseases that severely affect our poultry, such as bird flu which is also called highly pathogenic avian influenza, and we use the term HPAI for short, so we've been talking about. Well, good biosecurity features include, you know, separating poultry from wild birds, especially from wild ducks and geese, uh, by keeping the poultry indoors in a large coop, and this is especially true right now, because we're having a bird flu or HPAI outbreak in the Midwest, East, and Southern parts of the United States. If your birds do have to have outdoor access, then you need to cover that area with netting or use a covered screen porch to separate those poultry, the chickens, from the wild birds. Um, just to kind of help you out and maybe a little bit of a homework is that USDA has some great educational programs uh, with handouts that poultry owners can read and learn by. Uh, this one program is called Defend the Flock and we will put the link into the chat uh, but some of these basic principles, just a couple of summaries to kind of help you think about it, is one is you need to keep visitors to a minimum. You don't want people coming into your poultry operation and potentially bringing in a disease. You want to wash your hands before you enter uh, the poultry house and when you leave. You want to disinfect your footwear or your boots or use disposable shoe covers uh, before you enter and take them off before you leave. Change your clothes before you enter the poultry areas and before you exit the property. And the other most important thing is look for symptoms or signs of illness. And if you see any, uh, you need to report those to your veterinarian or your local animal health officials so they can make sure you don't have HPAI. 
you know, it kind of seems like these steps may be a little extreme for just a small backyard flock, but I can assure you that these are vital precautions to protect not only your backyard flock, but the poultry reared for our food supply here in the U.S. Thank you, Dr. Sween. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that we provide those links into the chat box. Uh, so if you're just joining us right now, we're talking with two poultry experts, and that's Dr. Swain and Dr. Hurley Bacon, and they're both with the U.S. National Poultry Research Center in Athens, Georgia, and they're answering your questions about raising healthy backyard chickens. So our next question, are roosters required for hens to lay eggs? How about you, Dr. Hurley Bacon? Uh, a rooster is actually not needed for hens to produce eggs, and this is good knowledge for you to have, especially uh, when you start reading any local laws that you may have that say no roosters allowed inside city limits. Um, you do not need a rooster for a hen to lay eggs. Um, so if you do want to produce more chicks, though, you will need a rooster to produce fertile eggs that, can eat, that you then can incubate for 21 days and hatch your own chicks at your house. Okay, great. So Dr. Swain, people are uh, interested in raising chickens for different reasons. And this person's question is, what type of chickens would you recommend someone get? Great question. And as an individual, you should always get the breed and type of chicken that best serves your needs. For example, if you really want to have fresh eggs, then a white leghorn uh, type of breed is the best egg producer that we have. And they're generally very good for that. If you want meat production, then you'd want to go with a Cornish. However, if you want something just for fun, there are a variety of different sizes and colors and shapes that may suit your individual interest. You should check with your local uh, poultry uh, clubs or a local hatchery, and they may have some unique heritage breeds or hobby breeds that, that suit your fancy. Okay, so what about for people who are just starting out? How many chickens would you recommend? Yeah, that's a good question, and I think don't overestimate how many you can handle. Start off small, you know, four or five. Uh, make sure you have the right area to put them in, as Dr. Hurley Bacon had mentioned. Uh, you know, have a coop for them to keep them in, uh, and start with a small number, that four or five, and see how it works out. And if that works out well, you could maybe go to more, as long as your coop is the right size. Got it. Okay, here's our next question. What feed is best for raising healthy chickens? And are there ingredients that you recommend I avoid? Dr. Hurley Bacon? So uh, feed is probably the item that will cost you the most money over the life of your flock, but it's not something you want to skip on at all. A quality complete feed formulated for the life stage and job of your flock is very important to help them maintain their healthy conditions. Um, you can identify some quality manufactured feeds at your local feed store. Um, a lot of times they have individuals that are well versed in what brands they carry and can help you identify what formulation of feed is best for your flock because um, it will differ from young chicks to mature birds. Uh, once you have identified a quality feed, remember it is very important to store your feed in a clean, dry area. It's also very important to inspect your feed every time you feed to ensure it's not stale and hasn't gone rancid or moldy. Okay, so you're talking about feeds. What about water? Many of us are trying to incorporate water into our diets. What about chickens? How, how often uh, should clean water be provided to chickens? Clean water should be available 24 hours, seven days a week uh, for your flock. It's on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum with regards to how much money. It's one of the cheaper things you can do, but it's also one of the best things that you should do for your flock. So if you're just joining us, we're talking with Dr. David Swain and Dr. Ann Hurley Bacon, who are poultry veterinarians at the U.S. National Poultry Center in Athens, Georgia and they're answering your questions about raising healthy backyard chickens. All right, here's our next question. If my yard will be fertilized or treated with weed killer or grass seed, etc., is there a concern if my chickens graze on it, Dr. Hurley Bacon? So like most things in life, it really depends. Uh, when in doubt, limit contact with such products for your flock. Um, it's highly advisable for you to read all labels before purchasing and or applying to your yard any such products. Okay, um, here's the next question. How do I best protect my chickens from predators like foxes or hawks or snakes? 
One of your best defenses is to have a well thought out chicken housing and pen space. Uh, you're going to want to cover your coop to protect against flying predators. Uh, this will also help uh, limit any contact uh, with wild waterfowl to help maintain biosecurity as discussed earlier. Um, you can use hardware cloth around the bottom of your coop and bury it about a foot or more underground. Um, this will help keep out any animals that are willing to dig such as foxes. Um, or raccoons. And I mentioned hardware cloth because uh, it has smaller openings than your typical chicken wire. And this will help prevent uh, any predators such as snakes that can tend to get it through your common chicken wire. Um, and the hardware cloth also helps uh, maintain adequate ventilation. Okay, so um, is there, an, you were talking about uh, chicken coops, is there an ideal temperature for your chicken coop? So it's hard to describe an ideal temperature for your birds because there's a lot of variables that go into it. Uh, when you're starting out with a young flock with, with chicks, the first uh, two or three weeks you're going to want to have a temperature around 95 degrees. Um, they definitely need to be kept warm until they can thermoregulate themselves um, as they age. Uh, they won't require that much heat, um, but it also depends on what your local environment is like. If you are in the south and you have high temperatures and high humidity, uh, you definitely want to maintain adequate ventilation. Um, if you're in uh, uh, out west where the temperatures are high but the humidity is low, the birds won't perceive it as hot as they will here in the south. So you can contact some of your local county extension agents that um, you should be able to find anyone available in, on the internet that's local to you. They can help you identify the correct temperature uh, for your, your local, local location <laughs> and your bird type. Okay, great. Sounds like a beautiful day there. I, I hear the birds chirping in the background. Birds chirping, pig chewing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, what, hey, Dr. Um, Hurley Bacon, do chickens need light in their coop? Uh, yes, ma'am, they definitely uh, do need light, especially if you're going to um, plan for them to raise eggs. And your light can be a your outside, uh, your the sunlight. Um, it can also be provided uh, by your uh, a light bulb. Um, it really depends on how your coop is set up. If your environment is completely closed in, you are going to want to put them on a lighting program provided by uh, light bulbs. Um, birds are stimulated to lay eggs through their light exposure. Um, as they get older and day length increases, then um, that will stimulate them to lay eggs. And then as like um, in the fall, when our day length decreases, they um, Will start to slow down on laying eggs. So depending on the job of your flock and, and their current setup, there are a lot of different options. Okay, Dr. Hurley Bacon, one more question. Um, I know you mentioned earlier about um, having your coops away from water or lakes. So could you recommend some location, a good location for a coop? Um, if you have a lake, um, if you have a, a local uh, lake in your community, um, you definitely want to put your coop as far away as possible. Um, lakes tend to encourage wild waterfowl, um, and if you can get a good distance away from that water source, that will help with your biosecurity standards. Um, if you don't have a lake to worry about, then you want to identify a location that is as safe as possible. Um, considering your, back, your backyard setup. Um, and you also want to provide uh, some sort of shade if you're in a hot um, environment. Uh, you also want to provide some protection from wind uh, if you're in a cold environment up north. Um, so it really depends on your, your setup. A lot of your county extension agents will actually come out to your location to help you um, plan your coop setup. All right, wonderful, okay. Uh, Dr. Swain, here's our next question. Can I mix different types of poultry in my flock? Great question. It's really best to only have one species of poultry at a time. So chickens or turkeys or ducks, etc. Although it's okay to have different breeds um, of the same poultry species, but it's, it's better not to have mixing of different poultry species. And the reason is, is that there are some diseases that can be very severe for, say, chickens, but in another poultry species, they may cause no ill effects. So you could bring in that other species, 
these birds are healthy from what you can tell. You put them in with your other poultry species, it could cause a severe disease. Now, I can think of one good example is that there's a particular virus disease that in laying chickens causes a severe drop in egg production. But that virus can be carried by domestic ducks with no ill effects. Um, this particular virus is called an adenovirus. All right, thank you, Dr. Swain. Our next question, what if my chicken sustains an injury from attack? How would I treat it? Treat it? Part of planning for your flock is, is planning ahead for scenarios like this. Uh, talk to your local veterinarians and find one that is willing to see chickens. Uh, due to the popularity of backyard flocks, the number of veterinarians uh, that are willing to see birds has, has increased over the last num couple years excuse me, over the last couple of years, uh, you wanna go ahead and establish that client-patient relationship with your veterinarian before you need their help. So you know how to contact them and where to go in these, these types of circumstances. Okay, so I know um, sometimes when you're transporting animals, um, it causes stress. So what's a good method of transporting my chicken to the vet? Uh, one of the easiest things would be to go and, and find a general pet carrier. Um, they're made of plastic, they come with a handle, they're lightweight, um, they have proper ventilation holes. Um, it also depends on how many birds you would like to transport. If you're going to be transporting a number of birds, you do want to be sure that uh, your carrier is large enough for them so that they're, they don't get too crowded and overheated. There is a chance that they may smother each other accidentally if, if they don't have enough space. Um, but those are the, the two main things, uh, maintaining ventilation and having enough space for your birds. Okay, thank you. All right, here's our next question. Dr. Swain, uh, does stress play a part in how many eggs my chickens produce and what can I do to help, their, help to reduce their stress? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, stress in chickens will cause them to reduce producing eggs. And just a couple of examples, you know, sudden loud noises, uh, change in the light intensity or the length of light they have. A uh, sudden change in the surroundings can, you know, cause that stress in chickens and they'll reduce or even sometimes stop laying eggs. You know, also the other problem is the uh, appearance of predators near the chickens in the coop or the exercise yard can also reduce egg production and frighten the birds and they could even stop eating, eating their feed for a few days. The best thing to do is to make sure you position your house um, so that it has the right amount of light coming in. You, you put it away from any potential loud noises and to try to keep the predators away from the, the fenced area. So if, uh, as far as stress, can that affect the way that um, chickens lay eggs? I mean, will it impact the type of egg that they lay? Will it change their... It sure can. If, if the chickens are stressed, not only can they reduce the production of eggs or even stop producing eggs, it could be that some of the eggs that are laid uh, have a thin shell because the, the, the stress uh, changes the physiology of the chicken so they don't put the calcium in the shell of the egg. So those eggs may be soft, easy to break. Uh, they may have some ab an abnormal shape, not be normal egg shape, and they could have dimples on the surface. But for, for general, those are not unhealthy. It's just they, they are easy to break. Okay, great. All right, here's another question. What are some common diseases I should look for in my chicken, Dr. Swain? That's a great question. And I would say one thing is, you know, for the health of your flock, your, either if you're beginning or you're a seasoned raiser of poultry, is to have a good relationship with a local veterinarian who understands uh, poultry diseases. And they, if you have an illness, then they can help you with an accurate diagnosis and a treatment plan. Now, chickens and other poultry are susceptible to a variety of diseases, uh, bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasitic diseases. So, you know, some of those can be prevented, some of them can be treated. Some viral diseases have vaccines to prevent, um, such as Newcastle disease. Uh, some of the bacteria and parasites can be treated. For example, foul cholera is a bacterial disease, uh, roundworms. But really having a relationship with a veterinarian is really critical to get an accurate diagnosis and develop a treatment plan that is scientifically sound and use therapeutics that are approved for veterinary use. Okay, our next question. What does it mean to what does it mean if my chicken develops lesions or red marks on its skin or legs 
and what should I do? Dr. Hurley Bacon? The cause of red lesions uh, appearing on your birds can be as simple as trauma, um, but it could also be as complicated as Merrick's disease virus. This is again a situation that having a relationship with your veterinarian can be invaluable uh, to help you get an accurate diagnosis and a proper treatment plan. Okay, um, next question. How can I keep my coop free from bacterial diseases? So uh, management and cleanliness are important here. Keeping the coop clean to reduce the number and types of organisms present in the environment is very important. Reducing stress through good management plays a role. Uh, all, of, all the different things we talked about earlier, uh, proper uh, environments set up for your birds, proper uh, feed management, providing adequate ventilation, um, good litter quality, uh, properly cleaned and disinfected equipment and facilities is very important and that can be as uh, simple as cleaning your boots before you enter your, your coop area, um, keeping any food containers or, or scoops clean, um, keeping your, your feed free of any mold, um, avoiding overcrowding, it causes stress and uh, when your birds are stressed, they can uh, become more susceptible to diseases. Um, so you want to also avoid handling your birds when they're already stressed. Uh, maybe you just relocated to a, a new environment. You want to give them a little bit of time uh, to readjust to their new environment before you uh, start handling them again or start a, a vaccination program. Uh, proper egg handling, good hatchery management, and implementing a good sanitation program is also quite necessary to help reduce any exposure to your birds. Um, and it's also extremely important to understand that some of these problems are going to occur even under the most ideal conditions. If you're just joining us, we are here talking with Dr. David Swain and Dr. Ann Hurley Bacon, who are poultry veterinarians at the U.S. National Poultry Research Center in Athens, Georgia. And they're answering your questions and about raising healthy backyard chickens. So if you have questions, just drop them into the chat box. Our next question, my chicken is losing lots of feathers. What could that be from, Dr. Hurley Bacon? There are a number of reasons this could be happening. Um, it, it could be due to aggression from flock mates or possible predator attacks. It, it could be a natural process of molting that tends to occur when the amount of light your chickens are exposed to has been decreased in length. Um, and molt can also be triggered by a change in their diet where you go from higher caloric intake to a lower caloric intake. Uh, it could be related to parasites such as mites or lice. If, if your birds seem to be uncomfortable, it, it is appropriate to definitely seek veterinary advice and, and get some answers to this question. It, it could be nothing or it, it could be something indicative of a disease process. Okay, so we'll take a few more questions before we wrap up. Um, Dr. Swain, here's a question for you. What should I do if one of my chickens is sick? How long should I keep it separated from others? Well, that really depends upon uh, what is causing the bird to become sick. And just to emphasize, again, having a good relationship with your veterinarian who can give you an accurate diagnosis, they can really tell you how long to separate sick birds from the rest of your flock. And that's a, that is what we kind of term to be a quarantine, so a, a separate place to keep them so they can heal and hopefully not transmit that disease to the rest of the flock. Okay, uh, another one for you, Dr. Swain. Uh, do chickens get flu bugs or viruses? And if so, what are the signs that I should look for to get them better? Yes, uh, all of our poultry species can develop HPAI or bird flu as we also used earlier. Uh, this HPAI is a very, very specific type of influenza virus. And the risk level today for us in the US is very high. There has been what we call H5N1, HPAI, identified in migratory birds along the East Coast and in the Midwest. And this has also resulted in cases in poultry in both backyards and in commercial poultry in several states. Um, these viruses cause very severe disease, sudden death, and, and within the flock, you can have up to 100% of the birds die, chickens and turkeys. But this virus is a little less severe in domestic ducks. Um, it will cause some sudden death, but usually the mortality rate is lower than it is in chickens and turkeys. But you know, you need to be on the lookout earlier on for do the chickens stop eating or stop drinking or stop laying eggs or die suddenly. 
And these are, are the, the signs or symptoms that you would recognize to be able to call your veterinarian and explain what's happening. And hopefully they will be able to get the right samples and send those forward uh, for a, a proper diagnosis to rule out HPAI. Uh, we're going to put a couple of links, I believe, in the chat box that could help you. Uh, there is a USDA uh, Animal Plant Health Inspection Service website that gives a report of, of the outbreaks of HPAI in the U.S. as they happened, and also a link to a public health issues website on High Path AI on the CDC website. Thank you, Dr. Swain. Okay, Dr. Hurley Bacon, here's a question for you. How do I keep my chickens happy, healthy, and stress-free? So good planning and all the things we just talked about. Uh, before purchasing birds, decide why you want to get into having your chickens. Uh, do you want pets that are beautiful hanging out uh, in, your, in a backyard coop? Uh, or do you want them to have a job? Do you want them uh, to lay eggs or provide meat? So as Dr. Swain mentioned earlier, get the right breed for your plans. Uh, Next, having a well thought out coop that is dry, well ventilated, is having a good feeding quality and feeding plan for the life stage of your flock. Um, establishing that relationship with a veterinarian that we mentioned a number of times is one of the most important things you can do to maintain the health of, to maintain the health of your flock. Um, and also maintaining good biosecurity to keep as many pathogens out of your flock as, as possible. Thank you. Uh, I do have a, a, another question for you. Um, do chickens do better in one season versus another? So it depends on your location. Um, down here in the south, we, we like to say that anybody can grow a, a chicken in, in the spring or the fall. Um, in the south, we have swinging temperatures. Um, it could be 70 degrees today and a high of 40 degrees tomorrow. Um, and so that makes it a, a little difficult sometimes. Uh, in other areas, you have a more stable environment. So it, it really depends on, on where you're located. So. Um, being sure that your birds have ad adequate ventilation um, and protection from any elements that may be in your area can, can help uh, significantly. Thank you, Dr. Hurley Bacon. All right, we're gonna take this last question. Dr. Swain, what are some other tips that you can provide as far as raising healthy backyard chickens? So yeah, let me give you just a, a few uh, tips that are kind of summarizations uh, on how to keep diseases out. I think that's one of the critical things about raising backyard poultry and any kind of poultry. First, we need to separate your poultry from wild birds and other animals by housing them indoors. Or if you have out, so outside exercise yards, you need to make sure those are either netted to keep separation from wild birds or porches with screens to keep the wild birds out. Second is don't track in possible diseases. So practice good biosecurity uh, by changing boots and your outer clothing uh, before you go into the poultry houses. Third, only obtain your poultry from a reliable supplier or a, a reliable hatchery, and especially if you're getting hatching eggs is, and, and chicks, is get them from a hatchery that's part of the National Poultry Improvement Plan because they set a very high standard to make sure they only send you healthy birds. And I think fourth is develop a relationship with your veterinarian who is knowledgeable on poultry husbandry and diseases. All right, this has been a great conversation. Thank you, Dr. Swain and Dr. Hurley Bacon for sharing your knowledge with us. This has been very informative to say the least. Uh, if we didn't get to your questions, make sure you visit the ARS website because all of your questions and answers, including valuable links to resources that we talked about, will be posted there. Our website address is www.ars.usda.gov. And while you're there, make sure you check out the ARS Wired section for other Facebook Live events that you may have missed. Thanks for joining us.